Hi lovelies, welcome back to the channel Style by C. Today's tutorial will be on how to recreate this beautiful two-piece. Do subscribe to the channel, share to friends, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. So the first thing first is to fold your fabric into two. Go ahead and mark the full length of your shirt. So for this shirt, I'm going to be working with 22 inches long. My shirt is going to be a little bit long. So that's why I went ahead to mark okay the next thing i'm going ahead to mark now is the hip line which is going to be at eight inches okay so this is eight inches the next thing is the crotch depth mine is going to be at 11 inches okay to get yours what you have to do is divide your hip measurements by four add one inch to it that is your crotch depth so this scratch depth, that is where we're also going to be inserting our round lap measurement. That is the upper time, the upper part of your lap measurement. Okay. Divide your hip measurements again by four and mark it on your hip line. Yeah. Mark it on your crotch depth line, which is your lap line mark it at the start point which is the waistline then the next thing to do is you're going to be adding extra two inches for seam allowance i'm using two inches instead of the usual one inch so i will have extra one inch after stitching with one okay so i'm going to be having for ease that is why i'm using two inches so go ahead and connect these three points together The next step now is to come to your crotch line that is the crotch depth you're going to measure what you have at your round upper lap or upper tine so mine is 24 inches when i divide it by two i have 12 inches so i'm going to go ahead and place it there and i'm going to mark 13 inches that is extra one for ease okay and I added extra one again because of the pleats I'm going to be having at the upper part. Alright. And I have a total of 14 inches. Alright. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating a curve from the lap line into the hip line. Okay. That is from your crotch depth. So this is what I went ahead to do. Just like you see me doing. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we have. Now the next thing to do is connect from your lap line to the hem of your shirt. Alright, so you are not shaping it. It's not having any trouser shape or a concise shape because of our pleats. So for the waist area, we are not shaping it. So you are going to be living in that way because of we are having pleats at the waist point. Okay, so we are not touching it. It's just going to be the XX just like we have it there so go ahead now to cut out your shorts the next step now is to use our front piece to cut out our back piece i want to place my front piece on top of another folded fabric which is going to be serving as my back piece yeah the next thing I'm going ahead to do is to mark two, 2 inches at the center of my shirt, that is the center side of the shirt. I'm marking extra to 2 inches. So the back piece is going to be 2 inches wider than the front piece. Okay, so you also do that to the upper part of the shirt. Then connect the dots together. Yeah. Having done that now, the next thing to do is to connect your hip to your crotch tips just like you did for your front piece okay so that's what i went ahead now to do now if you want splits to be at the back of your shorts go ahead and go ahead with the process i used but if you don't want a pleat at the back of your shorts mark your waist measurements plus extra one inch seam allowance that is for your back go ahead and cut it out like give your back piece the waist shape or if you don't use the measure use the pattern i used that is if you want splits to be at the back of your shorts 
at this point now i'm going ahead to cut out my back face okay so that is what we are doing now when you are done go ahead and slit the side open because it's it's still intact go ahead and slit it open having done that this is what we have now the next thing to do is you're going to be reducing our front piece by one inch please mind you it's at the center of your shorts not the back piece just the front so i'm going to mark one inch down there then i'm going to connect the one inch to my waistline okay the side waist then connect them in a slant form just like you see me doing so i'm going with my scissors to cut it out this is a basic body pattern for our top all right so i added extra one inch to my shoulder my shoulder is eight inches i added one inches for my stitching allowance okay the next thing is my armhole my chest line then the hem of the dress at the hem of the dress i used my hip measurements plus extra two inches allowance at the waistline i didn't use my waist measurements because i don't want it to be tight i want it to be a little bit free and i connected it to the chest line where my bust measurement is so for our back piece we are not going to be having any zip allowance as it is just there now the next thing to do is to cut out our neck depth which is two inches yeah and the neck width is three inches okay so after doing this the next thing to do is to go ahead and shape out your neck piece the next step here is to use this pattern paper now to cut out our front space. But first and foremost, we're going to be making a slant at the chest line area. Okay, so I'm not cutting it up entirely. I'm going to be leaving a few inches. Okay, so you have to open it up this way to create that your cow neck effect. So we we'll now be placing it on your actual fabric. The next step to take now is to place your pattern paper on top of a folded fabric. Okay, go ahead and adjust it. Note the wider you open that area, the more cow neck effects you are going to have. So, if you want it to be deeper, if you want it to be fuller, what you have to do is you keep adjusting it, all right? So, that is what you have to keep doing. You keep adjusting it depending on how deep you want yours to be. Having placed it now, the next step to do now is to connect from your neck width that is, this is for your back neck width to the center of your folded fabric, okay. So it's going to be in a slant form. Your front piece is not having any neck form. You're not having any neck at the front piece. You're just going to be making a straight through or a slant through to the center of your piece. All right. So having done that now, just adjust it and make sure that everything is aligning properly. Having done that now, the next thing to do is to go ahead and cut that out. Okay. So you're going to be cutting it. In that slant from towards your neck width that is the back neck width just as you see me doing all right so you cut towards the shoulder slope then into the armhole area yeah so i'm going ahead to cut out the bottom parts so this is the cutting process cut the side then you cut out the armhole proper from that point now you're going to go ahead and cut out your armor area proper at this point now this is what we have so go ahead and notch the shoulder joining all right so it will not be confusing when you open it up okay so that is what i went ahead to do yeah the next thing we're going ahead to cut out at this point is the facing or the lining for our front piece okay so this is for our car neck area it's going to go down below our armhole area so i'm going ahead now to cut out the piece yeah at this point now we have our car neck this is what it looks like so now we're going to go ahead and Turn it out with your facing or lining piece, okay? I actually use the fabric for my lining piece so that it will correspond, like the color will match up. Now you're going to go ahead and run a stitch starting from where you notched earlier 
to the other points where you notched earlier that is the shoulder joining we're going to be joining to your back piece see you in our next tutorial